too. Go bring it to daddy. Bring your shoe to daddy. I don't think I really even knew what legacy meant before this. And, and I guess now I, I, I think of it as how how someone's remembered, um, what, what their values were, how they how they lived. It's what happens to your memory when you're gone and how people choose to remember you. And it's not just how they remember, but how they feel. I remember in fifth grade, we had our fifth grade yearbook, and we were all able to say, what did you want to be when you grew up? And I'm pretty positive she had put teacher in there. It's interesting to me because I'm the youngest of three, and she was the oldest of three. Seeing her family dynamic, and the way that she took care of her siblings, that had, she had like this nurturing like thing about her that I think very much always read to me like she'd be a perfect teacher because the way that she cared for her siblings was a very like clear reflection of how she would care for students. I think what surprised me though was her wanting to be a high school teacher. The first time I met Ms. Ritzer was my junior year of high school, first day of school, um, and she was a new teacher, so I didn't know what she looked like or anything like that. Colleen was kind of into the cutesy stuff and into like, I don't know, things that were more gentle than I see a high school being. First day, I didn't see a teacher anywhere, and so I sat down in my seat, and you know, you're like scoping out the class, like seeing who's in it. But she also was a bit of a nerd. And there was one person that I didn't know. And she stood up and she introduced herself as our teacher. And I was confused um, because I thought there's no way that this girl is older than 19 years old. Our relationship kind of looked like a little bit like a friendship, I guess. The way that she talked about them, I think they felt like they could go to her and not just from like an academic standpoint. I remember talking about 90s music all the time. We would sing No Scrubs by TLC. When she started to make connections with certain students and know that she was having that impact on them, that was really amazing to see. I think I tweeted about something and she responded like, hope your summer's fun. And I was like, not as fun as permutations and combinations, which she knows that I hated. She had always had that impact on people in her life, but I don't think she yet knew the impact she was having. She was like, wow, this is such a proud moment. Um, but I just thought that was so cool. I think it's the people element. That's what like teaching is about. It's about connecting with individuals. And she, yeah, she was really smart and was able to like teach the lessons, but the way that she was able to connect with people, I think that's why she became a teacher. You know, when you're a teacher, they teach you in college, you know, don't take everything home with you. You'll get overburdened, you'll get overwhelmed, but how could you not take some of that home with you, you know? So I broke all the rules and I fell in love with it. <laughs> I made a career move to leave teaching and go into the police academy. And Colleen and her group were getting ready to go to kindergarten, so it kind of worked out okay. And Colleen was the only one who kept in touch even at the age of four. She would send me notes to the police academy. When we were in college, uh, even though we weren't 
living geographically too far apart, Colleen started to send me cards. This was probably one of her first ones. So I do remember about Colleen when she first learned to write, she would write backwards. So it's actually Dear Miss Lara. I would get a Halloween card. I got a St. Patrick's Day card. I got a Valentine's Day card from her one year as well. And then she learned how to make cards on her computer. So, created just for you by your biggest fan, and she put a fan, get it? She'd be like that person celebrating those holidays that no one's ever heard of before. Uh, and this one will always be my favorite, because it says, we'll be friends forever, won't we, Pooh? And even longer. It's almost like, and I hate to say, it's almost like she, she lived so much and so vibrantly. I don't know. She put so much life into that 24 years. The Friday before she passed, she and I went for a walk together around uh, my neighborhood. And we're doing this walk and it's fall and it's New England, so the trees are in full foliage mode. And we're walking by and this tree is like bright, bright orange. And we walk by and she's like, you know what? I have to turn around and take a picture of it because it was so beautiful. That was Colleen. Like, we're walking around a neighborhood, but she found some, like this like one tree and was like, this is like so impactful to her and she wanted to take a break to just look at it. And that was kind of, whenever I drive by that tree, I kind of think of her. And I, every year since then, hasn't been as bright and not, not as orange. The Evans Police initiated a search for the teacher and discovered blood in the second floor bathroom at Danvers High School. The body of Colleen Ritzer, 24 of Andover, was located in the woods near Danvers High School. It was apparent that she was a homicide victim. Jennifer, you've known her since kindergarten. What would you want people to know about her? I just want people to know how special of a person she was. She was my best friend in the whole world. And knowing her has made my life so much better. Dan she made everyone's life better. A math teacher at Danvers High, Ritzer was murdered last week at the school she loved, allegedly by one of her own students. But friends say she wasn't just a victim, she was a vibrant young woman with an infectious smile and outlook on life. After Miss Ritzer had passed away, I did not deal with it well. She wasn't here for long, but and now we're into, you know, students who were not here and um when um, when she was, and but they're still, they still know. What really struck me is when my English teacher, Miss Robinson, said, you know, you guys are having a hard time and we're having a hard time. And you guys think you need us, but we, what you might not understand is we need you just as much as you need us here. Anyone who had her knew what it was like to be in her classroom. Um, and it was that awesome enough that they still talk about it. And that really struck me as a 17 year old because I'm thinking these are adults, they can handle their emotions and you know, this is just work for them. And that's when I realized that it really wasn't just work for them. Sure, 
I think anyone who's kind of gone through a loss the way that we lost Colleen has probably felt kind of some level of, you know, you're out of control, there's nothing you can do. The person was there one day and they're gone the next. And I, I know I was hurting, but I also realized that it wasn't just me that was hurting at that time. It was the Danvers community, the Andover community. There were people who didn't even know Colleen who I think felt the impact of her, her death um, because they learned her story and were really touched by it. So I wanted to create a day. Today, people all over the state really focused on doing good deeds in memory of a teacher who was killed at Danvers High School. This campaign is called Kindness for Colleen and friends and family members say it is just what she would have wanted. And I chose to do the Day of Kindness on the anniversary of her passing because we can focus on the fact that she's gone or we can focus on the fact that she lived. And I wanted to be able to really f funnel my energy towards remembering my friend in the way that I remember her, which is not the way necessarily the news was portraying her when she had passed. And it's not about how she died. It was really about how wonderful and beautiful of a person she was and how she made people feel. Organizers didn't expect this kind of turnout. Roughly 5,000 runners and walkers. A sea of pink at the fourth annual Step Up for Colleen race. 4,000 people participated in the fifth annual Step Up for Colleen 5K in Andover. I think she was unaware of her strength and her impact. I think she was someone who probably didn't realize how like remarkable she was as a person. And I think that's part of the reason that she was so remarkable and so relatable. I brought along two friends with me, two of the original recipients of um, Colleen Scholarship, Katie Lamoli and Sam Walters. You know, with, with Miss Ritzer passing and wanting to continue her legacy and um, being you know, her being one of the reasons why I decided to go into the field that I did. Um, it, it, was, it was always motivation for me. On behalf of Tom, Peggy, Dan, and Laura Ritzer, we would like to share a few words from Colleen's family. I keep in contact with all of my teachers, or not all of them, but, you know, a handful that I went to high school with, and I have relationships with those people, and I talk to those people about school and what I'm doing, and. Um, as a teacher. So I guess part of me just wishes that I could do that with her still, and I can't. So I guess it's just my way of replacing that. We realize none of you knew Colleen, but we hope her legacy of kindness and good continues to leave a lasting impression on all of Danvers High. That is why I do it, and that is why I take those those qualities that I did learn from her and was inspired by, if you would say that, um, and use them to be an effective educator. look back on Colleen with like the fondest of memories and 
I thought talking about her was gonna be hard and sad, but when I think of her, I just feel like the joy that she brings. Miss her. That's, I think that's, that's hard. It's not that like, I'm glad that I had her because I think that's why it hurts that she's gone. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll do a Colleenism here and quote, but it's like, you don't know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. And I'm glad I have a lot of memories. Except you, Dad. So this one is to persuade you to get us a fool. You know, that, that was it. She was going to be a teacher. Um, and she never, I don't think she ever thought about doing anything mm -hmm. else. Because we'd be like, well, you know, teachers don't necessarily make I, a lot of money. I used to give yeah. her a hard time. You, oh, you yeah. sure that's what you want to do? Because, you know, you're not going to make a lot. And you're going to work uh, a lot. And... It's a lot of work. And she gets so mad at me. Like, that's what you want to do. Don't. <laughs> Discourage it and like just ask it. She would create a test and she'd be like, Hey Laura, can you take my test <laughs> to see if it's <laughs> to see if it's too hard or too easy or if they'll like it or if they won't understand it. So I used to have to take some of her <laughs> math tests to see how her students would react to it. <laughs> so you two were like guinea pigs with her yeah. sometimes. Oh, yeah. I don't think she ever asked me to do it. She probably knew I wouldn't su <laughs> succeed, succeed at it regardless. Pauline was sharp enough to know who might have needed some help. Jumped right in and would help those that uh, were in need of help. She would have these huge binders, um, like the biggest ones, you know, the like really big ones, full of lesson plans. She started bringing the fun aspects of it in. So she was, you know, saying when it was pie day and like where she would find like a, just a funny math, like joke type of geeky thing. Every day in class would share like a quote or a little picture of the day, um, depending on whatever season it was. When the math was tough or hard or like didn't seem to make any sense, um, it didn't feel like something that we couldn't figure out. These people never knew her, but they so understand who she was and they want to be supportive. That's To me, that says it all. It says it all. I mean, right there. 